class for your project can be a really challenging and sometimes overwhelming task. I'm going to help to break down some of those types of glasses for you and help you to choose them according to the finished product and according to your skill level as well as by your budget. Cathedral glass in its purest form is one color and it's transparent, meaning you can see exactly through it. It may or may not have a texture. This is a really pronounced texture. Sometimes it may have seeds in it, little air bubbles, called seedy glass. It may have a hammered texture, or it may have the kind of texture that just comes from a company's trademark, or it may have ripples in it. All of these will let a lot of light through. Sometimes though, when you set cathedral glass against a surface, it doesn't show the color at all. That just means it's very dense and it needs to have some light coming up through it in order to show its true colors. Next I have a glass called Wispy or Streaky. Some companies will call it Streaky, some companies will call it Wispy. It just depends on how dense the streaks are. Its technical title is Streaky Cathedral or Wispy Cathedral. That's because it is one color and there's usually white streaks in it, but sometimes there are other streaks. Like for example, this is green cathedral that has dark green or olive green streaks in it. This one's clear glass with white streaks in it. This one's magenta glass with white streaks in it. You're going to see the glass look one way when you're looking right at it, but then when you put it in front of light, the glass changes. Sometimes streaky will have a little bit of brownish where all of the white is. Next we have opalescent glass. The most colors are used. Opalescent glass is always translucent, meaning it's only letting light through. Sometimes it will be completely able to disguise anything from the other side. The opalescent is usually several colors or it can be solid. The range of colors are endless, sometimes five or six colors in a piece of glass, but a lot of times there's maybe just a single or maybe two colors in glass that's opalescent. Sometimes opalescent glass is solid, and even though it says it's solid, it may look like it has several different colors that are very similar in the same glass. Like when you look at this solid red, it kind of looks like there are some stripes in it or the grain of the glass is more visible. Whereas this white glass is very solid and very even looking. And when you look at the two, you can tell the difference. There are two different brands there, but both of them are solid opalescent. Next we have iridized glass, or iridescent glass, as they call it. It's glass that has a special treatment on its surface, and it makes it sort of look like mother of pearl, or power shell, or like an opal, and it's absolutely gorgeous to look at. It's usually done on one side of the glass. This one, it's done on pink. But a lot of different brands will iridize all kinds of their glasses, from cathedral glasses all the way up to solid opalescence. This one, unfortunately, you can't see very well, but it is a clear texture that has an iridized surface to it. It's only done on one side of the glass, but the iridescence can sometimes, on clear glasses, be seen through both sides. this glass. This is Baroque, named after the time period. It's made by Spectrum, and it usually starts with clear glass and a great big bold swirl of a color, sometimes a color plus white. This particular black Baroque has been iridized, just proving that lots of different glasses from different companies may get iridized. This glass is called glue chip. 
It's a surface treatment that they put on the glass. And they will do it to certain cathedrals, plus they will do it to clear glass. Usually it's clear glass, but they will take the glass and they will spread a specific kind of glue over the surface. And then when they heat it, it starts to crackle and chip off like this. That's the name, glue chip. Glue chip is a really good glass for backgrounds in anything that's going to be hanging in a window. This one's double chip, while this is single chip. If you notice the difference, the amount of distortion of whatever's on the other side of the glass. This glass is pretty amazing. This is glue chip, but it is mirrored. So one side has the treatment of a mirror on the back of glue chip. This is called Van Gogh glass, and it's available in different metallic colors. This one would be meant for putting against a wall as no light is coming through. You can see just a little bit of my hand right there. It is mostly opaque. When you're doing a project, you always want to take into account what its final place is going to be. Is it going to have a candle inside? Is it going to have a light bulb? Is it going to be in front of a wall? Is it going to have light coming through a window? Your glass choice may or may not need a whole lot of light. For example, this box here was made all out of cathedral, kind of dark and dense cathedrals. I thought it was going to be great when I first made it because I love these colors. If you look at these colors, you've got these great rich jewel tones. However, when you put the box together, even though there's light coming through, all of the colors get darker and they get more dense looking. A better solution probably would have been if I really wanted to see these colors better, I could have used a clear or a clear texture or glue chip for this part of the box and maybe for the lid sides. That way, when I put the box on here, I get light coming through. And that way, the colors, the cathedral colors, would stand out better. That same thing is true of this box. This is a great box, and if you look, it's this beautiful color red. However, when you look at this box, you can't really even tell what color it is. It's very dark. You can open it up, and you can see some of the light coming through. But when you close it, all of that dense cathedral kind of gets all held in and there's not a lot of light that's bringing out the color. Take this lampshade for instance. I thought it was going to be great because I absolutely love, love, love the colors, but you can see everything through here. And once you put this on a light bulb, you end up seeing the light bulb and everything inside the lampshade, all the hardware. In my opinion, it's probably better to use opalescent glass instead of cathedral when you're doing a lampshade so that you don't see anything inside and you can concentrate on the design. Your glass looks one way when you just have it with no light on. And then when you turn the bulb on, something different is going to happen. So you always want to figure out what your final purpose is going to be when you're choosing your glass. Say, for example, you're going to make a lantern. Making a lantern you're going to have candlelight coming through. You can have a glass that's a lot more see-through. You can have a texture to it. Streaky, wispy, any clear texture or any cathedral would look great when you have something with a really low light source. You can pretty much know that if you've got something that's going to go into a window, your possibilities are even more endless because if you've got a lot of light coming through that window, that glass is going to shine. It's always a good idea to hold your project in front of whatever light source you're going to be using, be it a window, a light bulb, or in front of candles, because the light's going to change what the glass looks like, and you definitely don't want any surprises. Getting to know your glass brands is a really important thing, because if you're a beginner, you want to probably start out with a beginner glass, such as Spectrum. Spectrum makes inexpensive, but very attractive glass, made specifically for beginners. It's a great glass to use because it's very easy to cut. Both sides of spectrum glass are usually very smooth. Even if they do have a texture, it's very slight in comparison. Occasionally, they do make some of their glass 
that has a distinctive texture on one side, but you can always cut on the other side. There will be two separate sides. One side will look a certain way, it may have a little bit more white mixed in with it, and then the other side is darker. And so you can choose which side you want depending, and you can mix and match where you want the colors to go. As you move up in brands, the more expensive your glass becomes, typically the higher quality it's going to be. It may be a little bit harder to cut. You may experience a little bit of difficulty or just a learning curve when you're cutting it. Some glasses, as you go up in, in price, the textures start to change and the textures become far more pronounced, meaning both sides become very textured. As you go up in price, you get a different look to the glass that's a little bit more expensive looking. You've got a little bit more flash as far as the different colors, lots of more color combinations, that it just looks more expensive. Both sides will have a texture to it, which makes it a little bit harder to cut. It's going to require a slight different pressure, and you just kind of experiment with it when you're using it in your project. I'd start with inexpensive glass first before you move up to brands like Bullseye, Ouroboros, or Yagahaney. These are really amazing glasses and they have incredible effects in front of light and just standing on their own. Because of their surface and because of what they use inside the glass, it makes it a little bit different to cut. You work up to this as you gain more experience.